life of the Christian should be a life of repentance. And by repentance, he meant confession of sins and then trust that Jesus has paid for those sins. And so God used the teaching of his word to bring about a reformation in the church. So on this Reformation Sunday, we don't just celebrate a historical event, even though that's part of it. We don't commemorate a man, Martin Luther, though we're thankful that God used him to preach the word. We actually focus on what God's word has always and will always do. God's word works. It creates and strengthens faith in people's heart. It builds and gathers the church. That is the focus of our worship this morning. We want to welcome all of those who are joining us online this morning as well. We're so glad that you're with us. If you are watching online, we'd love it if you would leave a comment to let us know that you're worshiping with us, even if that comment is just your name. Let us know that you're gathered with us. It's good for us to see that, and it's good for us, too, to know how we can serve you better. If you're looking for our worship folder, you can find that on our church website, livingshepherd.com. If you go to the Alive and Growing tab there at the top, you'll see a heading for worship. If you click on that, you'll find a button where you can download this worship folder. This morning, we have a special order of service involving some readings from Romans 8, uh, as well as three short devotions from a reading in Jeremiah. So may God bless your worship this morning as we celebrate the work that God's Word does. Please stand. We worship in the name of God the Father by whose word all things were created and by whose power all things are sustained. Let us worship God the Father. We worship in the name of God the Son, the word who became flesh and made his dwelling among us in order to redeem all mankind from sin and death. Let us worship God the Son. We worship in the name of God the Holy Spirit, who has called us to faith through the gospel, and gives us the power to live for Jesus through that same gospel. Let us worship God, the Holy Spirit. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. As God's children, let us pray with confidence to our gracious God. Holy Lord God, in mercy you gave us your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh, to live among us so that we might know you as our true Father. In grace, you gave us your Holy Spirit to sanctify us and strengthen us and lead us deeper into your Holy Word so that we might learn again the freedom from sin and death your gospel gives. Help us to praise you for these glorious gifts that our lives may daily reflect your love and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated for our opening hymn.
Please stand. Let's confess our sins with the responsive words printed for you on pages four and five. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I see, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The Lord looks down from heaven on the sons of men to see if there are any who understand, any who seek God. All have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you lifted me out of the dust. O Lord my God, I call to you for help immediately. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of his saints. Amen. Lord be with you. Also with you. Gracious Lord, our refuge and strength, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. 
Protect and comfort them in all temptations. Defend them against all their enemies and bestow on the church your saving peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading this morning is the gospel from Mark chapter 13, reading verses 5 through 11. Here Jesus gives us warning signs to remind us that the end times are coming and that he will return again. And that also comes with this urgency, this call from God to share our faith with others. So how do we do that? Jesus tells us here. We simply proclaim the gospel. We simply tell people what the word says, and then we watch the word do its work. Out of respect for the words and works of Christ, please stand for this gospel reading. The gospel according to Mark chapter 13. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues. On account of me, you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time, for it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our psalm for the day is one of Martin Luther's favorite psalms, Psalm 46. It's set to an arrangement as a hymn, so let's sing Psalm 46 together.
Our second scripture reading this morning is from Revelation chapter 14, reading verses 6 and 7. So what will it be that will equip you to share your faith with others? It is God's word, which works. What will it be that will continue to give you strength and comfort even in the midst of the difficult and painful times to come? God's word, which works. What will it be that will protect you and preserve you until that day where you get to rejoice in glory with Jesus forever? It is God's word which works. Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory. Because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This is the word of our God. Our next hymn is hymn 199. We'll sing the first two verses. God's word that we'll use for our devotions this morning is Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 28 through 29. We've already said that our theme is God's word works. Here, God lays out how his word works. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain? declares the Lord. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? This is God's word. I want to picture, I want you to picture this for a moment. I want you to Imagine a bleach blonde haired boy sitting on a long sidewalk out in front of a square white house. At his side is a pile of gravel that he culled from from the driveway with dirty hands. And in his hand is a hammer. And he takes one of those rocks and sets it between his legs and then he takes the hammer and he crushes the rock. And then he picks up the pieces, he looks at them a little bit, and then he sets them in a brown, tattered paper bag at his side. So that picture might raise a couple questions in your mind. First of all, what is he doing? Secondly, why is he doing this? Why is he crushing rocks with a hammer? And third, is this really what Pastor did for entertainment as a young boy? I'll answer all of those questions. I don't really know what I was doing. I don't know why I was crushing rocks, but yes, this is what I did for entertainment as a little boy. I wish I had better answers to those questions. But I actually have thought a lot about this this week as we prepared this worship service for Reformation Sunday because in this word, we actually have a similar picture. The Almighty God the creator of the universe, uses his word 
like a hammer to crush us. And maybe we ask similar questions when we hear this. What is God doing? He is striking out against that rock-hard, inborn sin in our hearts. He is crushing that illusion that says, sin is no big deal, it doesn't really matter. He is cracking apart a feeble life that is too often held together by anger or greed or pride. This word is like a hammer that crushes us and our sin. So then the second question, why is God doing this? Why does God's word break us in pieces? Because he doesn't want us to walk that smooth, unhindered path to hell. Because he wants us to realize how real and deadly sin is. So real and deadly that he sent his own son to die for it. We are broken to pieces because God loves us. That last question might be the, the most difficult one for us to answer. Is this really what God does with his word? Yes, it is. Though it's not the only thing God does with his word. And we'll see that in this reading with these other pictures. But maybe this brings to mind another image. The, the same hammer in the hands of a carpenter tears out, pulls out, demolishes, but then also straightens and stabilizes and secures. That is what God does with his word. Yes, it breaks us to pieces, but it also stabilizes us and strengthens us so that God, the master carpenter, can build us up can gather us as a church and grow us together with the very same nails that pinned Christ to the cross. God's word works like a hammer. Let's continue now with the next two verses of In Trembling Hands, Lord God, We Hold. Let the prophet who has a dream tell his dream, but let the one who has my word speak it faithfully. For what has straw to do with grain, declares the Lord. Any good farmer or rancher can answer that question. The question that God asks here through the prophet Jeremiah. What has straw to do with grain? Well, nothing. Right? Straw is the empty, dried-up stalk of the plant. Grain is the actual meat, the, the fruit, the real nourishment of the plant. Even though those things come from the same plant, they are dramatically and distinctly different. And so God's word is like grain. Dramatically and distinctly different from all those other supposed sources of nourishment that we sometimes seek. Flattery. 
success, power, self-esteem. These are all empty, dried up stalks with no real nourishment. They are straw. But God's word is grain, the real food, the real nourishment, the real strength. What is it that nursed you back to health after the crushing blow of the hammer of God's law? It is God's word and the forgiveness there within it. What is it that that brought you to faith, that changed your heart to know your Savior? It is God's Word and the truth of Christ within it. What is it that strengthens your faith? What is it that brought you here this morning? It is God's Word and the assurance of peace and life within it. God's Word is like grain. It is real nourishment. It is real food. And that maybe says a little bit about our daily priorities, doesn't it? It maybe says something about what we stack our plates with in order to to feed our faith every day, not the bare and bland portions of attention or fame or success, but with a heaping serving of the grain of God's word, which works which feeds us and strengthens us and nourishes us to know God's grace. God's word works like grain. Let's continue with the last three verses of In Trembling Hands, Lord God, We Hold. Once more, God's word from Jeremiah chapter 23. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord. Years after the Reformation, Martin Luther was once asked how he managed to do all of it. How he managed to stand up against corruption and tyranny. How he managed to battle against false teaching. How he managed to to form a church body based on the pure word of God alone. You know what his answer was? He said, I did nothing. God's word did it all. God's word does it all. That really explains to you why we've been singing these verses of a hymn In trembling hands, Lord God, we hold. It's not trembling out of fear. It's trembling out of awe and wonder at the power that is there in God's word. God's word works like fire. It spreads. It grows. It's not static or lifeless, but it burns with intensity and heat and passion so that those people whose hearts have been touched by it cannot help but spread it to others in the way they speak and in the way they live. Your hearts, which have been touched by the Word, 
the power of the Spirit working through God's Word also then touches other people's hearts and lives with the same power of the same Holy Spirit. God's Word spreads. But that might very well bring to mind another truth from God's Word. And maybe it's something that we thought of last summer, especially when we saw those great plumes and clouds of smoke from the Mullen fire. Or even this summer, as the smoke settled in the Laramie Valley from wildfires in other areas. Yes, God's Word spreads. Yes, fire spreads. But it also brings pain and danger. And that is what God's Word does too. Perhaps we forget that. God tells us that when His gospel works in people's hearts and changes their hearts and their lives, it also reveals the pain and difficulty of trouble and persecution. That's what fire does. And yet, that's not a bad thing. It's not. Not according to God. Because even though God's word works like fire, burning and spreading, it also preserves and refines and allows for new growth. I haven't actually gone up there recently, but I'm told that if you go up to where the Mullen fire burned last summer, you'll see a lot of new growth sprouting up from the ground. That's what fire does. That's what God's Word does. God's Word works like a hammer that breaks us and our sin to pieces beneath Christ's perfect work. God's Word works like grain that feeds us and nourishes us and sustains us. And God's Word works like fire that spreads and grows while still preserving us and refining us and allowing new growth to take place. God's Word works. God's Word does it all. Amen. Let's now stand to confess our Christian faith together. We'll confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. It's printed for you on pages 8 and 9. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll gather our thank offering. We won't be passing the offering plate, but there is one sitting on the small table in the back. If you're so moved, you may drop your offering in that plate at any time. If you're a guest or a visitor with us, it's important that you know that you are not obligated to give. We are simply happy to have you here and to share the word of God with you. Your gifts, your offerings, though, certainly are appreciated and welcomed because this is one of the ways that our congregation works together 
to take this good news of Jesus out into our community. During this time of the offering, we kindly ask that whether you're a member or a visitor or a, a friend or a guest with us this morning, that everyone please sign the friendship registers. They are located at the bottom rack of the center chair in each row. This is one of the ways that we keep track to make sure we say thank you to joining us for joining us with worship this morning. Please stand for prayer. This morning we have the opportunity to use a responsive version of the Lord's Prayer. At the place for special prayers this morning, we'll also thank God for the blessings that He continues to pour out on us through our word, especially as we look back at the history of the Reformation, but even now as He continues to give His word to us. Let's pray. Gracious and almighty God, through Jesus' perfect sacrifice, you have restored us as your redeemed and forgiven children. In your name we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. Continue to reveal yourself as our loving and forgiving Father through your word, so that we daily praise and glorify your name, and we live in gratitude and thanks for being adopted into your holy family. And so we pray. Give us your Holy Spirit to forever rule in our hearts so that by his power and through his work your kingdom continues to grow and spread. Use us and the gifts you have given to share your kingdom of grace with others. We pray. Make us eager to carry out your will each and every day. Continue to strengthen us so that our will conforms to yours and lead us to a greater trust in you knowing that you lead, guide, and control all things for the eternal good of your people. To that end, we pray. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Merciful Lord, you are the creator and sustainer of all things. Continue to shower your daily blessings into our lives so that we appreciate your power and glory all the more. Open our eyes to see your blessings to share them generously with others, and to trust your wise provision always. And so we pray. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord God Almighty, on this special Reformation Day, we thank you especially for all the work that your word does. It works in the hearts of your people, creating and strengthening faith. It works in the midst of your church, protecting it from error and assuring it that the gates of hell will never overcome it. It works, too, in the plans and purposes of your individual congregations as they reach out into our world with the good news of Jesus and trust that your word never returns empty. Lord God, bless us here at Living Shepherd so that we always and only rely on your word in our ministry. Give us confidence and eagerness to share the word with others. Above all, give us joy in what your word reveals about Jesus that he is our Savior who takes away the sin of the world. Reassure us of your love and forgiveness, Lord, flooded into our hearts and lives through Christ. Let this forgiveness then flow into the lives of others as well, that they too may know their perfect Savior. We pray. We know the devil, the sinful world, and our own flesh seek to destroy our souls and lead us away from you. Guard us from the poison of unbelief and the traps of wickedness and sin. Trusting your protective power, we pray. Lead us not into temptation. 
Keep our bodies and souls safe, preserving especially our faith in Christ so that we may experience the undiminished joys of life everlasting. We pray. Deliver us from evil. Lord, you alone govern and rule the church. You alone have the power to hear and answer our prayers. You alone deserve all our praise and honor and thanks. With joyful and grateful hearts we pray. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Relying always on the perfect work Christ has done for us, we pray with confidence knowing that you hear and answer according to your will. And so we join together and say, Amen. Amen. Yes, it shall be so. You may be seated. We continue now with the preparation for Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He protects and preserves his church in every age and gives us confidence to lift up our heads and watch for Jesus with joy. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it. In remembrance of me, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. God tells us in his word that when we receive Lord's Supper, we are receiving bread and wine as well as the body and blood of our Savior Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. God also tells us in his word that when we commune together, we are in fact confessing agreement in faith and teaching 
with those with whom we commune. For this reason, we kindly ask that if you're a guest or a visitor with us, if you're not a member of Living Shepherd or a member of a congregation in fellowship with Living Shepherd, you not commune at this time. This will give us the opportunity to study God's word together, to see what he says about this sacrament, and it will also keep you from being in the uncomfortable position of saying you agree with what our church teaches without first knowing what our church teaches. We will again practice table distribution this morning, so what that means is we'll begin on this side of the sanctuary. You're invited to come forward through the center aisle, line up to receive Lord's Supper, and then return to your seats by the side aisles. And then we'll move on to this side of the sanctuary. Come, for all things are now ready. this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and preserve you and keep you in the one true faith until life everlasting. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen.
We continue now with the closing prayer that's printed for you on page 11. Please stand. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. And His mercy endures forever. We give thanks, Almighty God, that You have refreshed us with this holy supper and through Your Word. We pray that through these You will strengthen our faith in You and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with You and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 293, God's Word is Our Great Heritage. Let's remain standing to sing this hymn. You may be seated. Good morning once again to all of you. It is such a joy to be here. It's a privilege to be able to worship our gracious and loving God with you.